How many times do you feel tired and don't understand why? You wake up full of good intentions, but after just a few hours you feel listless and lacking energy. Did you know that there are some bad habits that sap your energy and weaken your inner strength? If you also often find yourself in this situation, don't worry because you are not alone. And thanks to this Zen story, you will discover what are the 12 things not to do if you get up early and are over 50. So, stay until the end of this video because you will understand what are the things that steal your energy and prevent you from achieving mental and physical well-being. And you will learn to transform your awakening into a ritual of awareness that will give you emotional balance and inner peace. But before continuing, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications to stay updated when we publish new content for your spiritual growth. In the heart of an ancient Japanese forest, where the sunlight filters through the leaves of the centuries-old trees, stands a village immersed in profound tranquility. In the center of the village stands the Buddhist temple where the elderly monk Aki lives, famous for his wisdom and his knowledge of human beings. One day, as Birdsong greeted the dawn, Aki gathered his disciples for an important lesson on modern life. His eyes, like wells of crystalline water, held the knowledge of a thousand lives, and on this occasion too, he would reveal information to his disciples that would help them. Today, he began in a calm voice, I will tell you a fairy tale that will guide you through the 12 pitfalls that often await us when we wake up, especially after we are over 50. They are subtle pitfalls that can ruin our mood, sabotage our energy, and undermine our productivity for the entire day. The first pitfall is the sleep song. Do you know when, after waking up, we decide to stay in bed for a few more minutes? Like a serpent slithering in the dark, Aki said, Sleep lingers in our bed, whispering promises of rest and oblivion. But that fleeting sleep, similar to an illusion, leaves us dazed and listless, like butterflies with withered wings. We mistakenly think that giving ourselves a few extra minutes of sleep will help us face the day better. But in reality, this is never the case. A disciple, still sleepy, asked, Master, how can we resist the song of sleep? Aki, smiling, replied, Try to imagine your awakening as the beginning of a great adventure. So, like a knight preparing for battle, get out of bed with enthusiasm and face the day with courage. Do it without hesitation, without looking back, with decision and vigor. After just a few minutes, you will understand that you have made the best choice. While the disciples listened carefully to the monk's words, Aki moved on to the second trap to avoid, the smartphone. A whirlwind of notifications, messages, and social networks captures all of you like a spider weaving its web, the sage continued. The digital world can wait. The early morning is a sacred moment, dedicated to connecting with ourselves and the world around us. Avoid picking up your smartphone as soon as you wake up. Dedicate yourself to yourself and your healthiest rituals, movement, breakfast, meditation. One disciple, staring blankly at her phone, muttered, Master, how can I resist the temptation to check my phone? Aki looked at her kindly, then looking everyone in the eyes, he added, Think of your smartphone as a digital monster that wants to devour your time and energy. Turn it off and dedicate yourself to something more valuable, like meditation or reading. Can the world, and those who write to you, wait at least 30 minutes longer? While the disciples meditated on his words, the monk continued his lesson by talking about the negative habit of staying in bed, even if we are awake. The bed is a cozy nest, but it is not our natural habitat, Aki explained. As soon as you wake up, stretch your legs, stretch your muscles, and greet the new day with enthusiasm. A disciple, accustomed to lazing in bed for an hour before getting up, objected, Master, it is so warm under the covers. It is relaxing to stay there for a while before getting up. Aki laughed fondly. Think of your bed as a gilded cage that imprisons you. 
Would you like to stay locked up in it forever? Get out of this cage and embrace the new day. It will give you freedom and many new experiences and opportunities for growth. Another thing Aki talked about is the unhealthy habit of not drinking water before having breakfast or starting work. Our body, after hours of sleep, is like a barren desert yearning for water, Aki stated. Drinking a couple of glasses of water when you wake up helps reactivate the metabolism, eliminates toxins, and gives energy and mental clarity. Furthermore, if we add lemon juice to water, we create a drink that helps the body and the spirit to cure diseases and strengthen the immune system. A disciple confessed, Master, I always drink coffee in the morning, not water, and to this, I add a coissant and some jam. Aki smiled and turning to everyone said, Imagine water as an elixir of life that awakens your body and mind. Drink with gratitude and let yourself be flooded with energy. You can always drink coffee after drinking water with lemon on an empty stomach. Avoiding, however, croissants and other foods rich in sugar. Moving is life, exclaimed Aki moving on to another habit that should be cultivated every day. There is no need for exhausting marathons. A few stretching exercises or a walk in the open air are enough to awaken the body, improve circulation, and oxygenate the mind. Most of us move too little, and this harms both the body and the spirit, since body and spirit are extremely connected. A disciple, looking lazy, objected. But master, I don't have time to exercise in the morning. I have to go to work. Aki looked at him firmly. Think of exercise as an investment in your health and well-being. Dedicate a few minutes a day to this practice, and you will live longer and healthier. Continuing with the lesson, Aki spoke about caffeine. It is a precious ally for our body, but if taken too early, it can interfere with the natural production of cortisol, the hormone that regulates our circadian rhythm. Remember that balance is essential in all things we do. Therefore, drink coffee, but without exaggerating with the quantities. And above all, wait until at least 10 in the morning to sip your cup of coffee, savoring its taste and benefits. Until that time, let the body purify and regenerate itself, thanks also to the water drunk on an empty stomach, which we have already talked about. One disciple, a coffee lover, pointed out that it is difficult to start the day without a dose of caffeine. Aki smiled understandingly. Think of coffee as a powerful sword that must be used at the right time. Wait until your body is ready and then enjoy your coffee mindfully. Another important habit to carry on, according to Aki's wisdom, is to immediately open the bedroom windows. Sunlight is a powerful natural antidepressant, the monk stated. Opening the curtains and letting yourself be flooded by the morning rays helps regulate the biological clock, improves mood, and gives energy. The sunlight is like a warm embrace that awakens you and gives you life. Open your windows and let yourself be flooded by its energy. While the disciples took notes and discussed among themselves the things they had learned up to that point, Aki paused so that everyone could reflect. A hot bath can be relaxing, but in the morning it can put your body and mind to sleep, he continued. Opt for a fresh and vigorous shower, which will give you vitality and concentration. A disciple, a lover of hot baths, said sympathetically, Master, I can't do without my hot morning bath. It relaxes me and gives me a very sweet scented embrace. Aki laughed fondly. Think of a cool shower as an energizing dip that wakes you up and prepares you for the day. Let the cold water give you strength and vitality. And in the evening, when there are just a few minutes left before going to bed, treat yourself to a warm and scented bath. In the morning, you have to be alert and active. In the evening, you can relax. After leaving the disciples laughing and joking about the story of the hot bath, Aki went on to talk about intuition and the bad habit of not listening to it enough. The first part of the day is ideal for connecting with your inner self, he said. 
Take a few minutes in silence to listen to the voice of your intuition. What are your priorities? What goals do you want to achieve today? A disciple, looking confused, asked, Master, how can we listen to our intuition? Aki looked at him kindly. Close your eyes and focus on your breathing for a few minutes. Listen to the silent voice that speaks to you from the depths of your heart. Intuition will guide you towards the realization of your dreams. Giving in to distractions is another mistake many of us make, and Aki talked about it trying to make everyone understand its importance. The fast-paced world around us is full of stimuli that can easily distract us from our goals, he explained. Dedicate a few minutes to visualizing your dreams and aspirations. Mental clarity will guide you towards a day full of satisfaction. Neglecting gratitude is another serious mistake that many make. Gratitude is a precious flower that blooms in the garden of our heart, Aki stated. So, in the morning, take a few minutes to express gratitude for the small and big things that make your life special. A disciple with a gloomy expression asked, How can I be grateful when I have so many things to worry about? Aki looked at him with pity. Then, addressing everyone, he said, Focus on the little things that bring you joy, a cup of hot tea, the singing of birds, the smile of a loved one. Gratitude will give you joy and serenity, like a ray of sunshine that illuminates a dark day. And along with gratitude, remember not to neglect compassion either, which is a balm that soothes the wounds of the soul, Aki explained. In the morning, dedicate a moment to yourself with kindness and understanding. Accept your limitations and imperfections as a friend welcomes another friend. You see, my dears, we all make mistakes. No one is perfect. Compassion means accepting yourself with all your frailties without judging yourself. Be kind to yourself like a gardener tends his flowers until they grow and become large and colorful. As the sun hid behind the mountains and the temple walls turned pink, Aki added, remember, my dear disciples, that each new day is a precious gift. Don't let yourself be trapped by negative habits. Transform your awakening into a ritual of awareness and joy, and your life will be a wonderful journey towards self-realization. The disciples, fascinated by the master's words, looked into each other's eyes and made a promise to themselves. From that day on, they would give much more importance to the first minutes after awakening. But what does this story teach us? That how we start the day can profoundly influence the rest of our time. If we wake up with stress, anxiety, and negativity, it is likely that these emotions will accompany us throughout the day. On the contrary, if we choose to start the day with awareness, gratitude, and compassion, we will create the ideal conditions for living a happy, productive, and fulfilling day.